All right, welcome to Firefighters' Own Worst Enemy, the blog. It's been a while since I posted, and I uh, thought it was time to put something up. And I did a video similar to this for my work um, as a training officer at Florissant, and uh, took out the more specific details for this uh, particular building and made it a little more generic in regards to elevator operations, and that's what we're going to talk about shortly today. Uh, these operations don't have to necessarily be in a high-rise. Anywhere that you have an elevator, it's important to understand how they work. Uh, when you get to the main lobby of the elevators, whether you have one, two, three, or multiple ones, uh, you'll have a firefighter switch uh, that you'll put a little round key in, and it should be in the off position when you arrive, and we want to be able to stick the key in and put it in the on position. So here it is in the off position. It's straight up and down, and we want to turn it to the right into the on position. And here it is in the on position, and you can kind of see on the right side of the key, uh, right here, that flange is a little wider, uh, and that is the indicator of where that position is on that lock. At this point, when you turn that firefighter switch to the on position, it's going to recall all those elevators on that bank that this particular switch is connected to. If you've got several banks of elevators, uh, maybe this only recalls two out of six, and you've got two of these panels, or Maybe it recalls three out of nine. You know, however it's set up, it's it's uh, incumbent upon you to know uh, your building in your area. So just understand that an alarm is going to sound in that car, uh, and it's going to give the occupants time to get in the car or get out of the car. The doors are going to shut, and it's going to come to the lobby. Uh, it's not going to stop at any floors, no matter who's pressing up or down button on any floor. So in this particular building, there's 18 stories. If it was on the 18th floor and you recalled it, and somebody pushed the button on the sixth floor, it's not going to stop at that floor. It's going to come all the way to the lobby, and you now have control of that elevator. Uh, once the elevators come back to the lobby, the doors will open uh, on whichever elevators you're controlling. In this particular building, there's two elevators uh, side by side, and they both come down and they both open, and both cars have the same panels inside. And you can see I put the key in on this firefighter switch inside the elevator car. This is inside the elevator car, and it's in the off position. Um, again, you can see the flange on the key uh, is a little bit wider and deeper, and it indicates it's in the on off position. We want to turn it into the on position. When we get it in the on position, it's this firefighter helmet um, insignia next to it. The firefighter button is going to light up. It's going to indicate that we now have control of the car. So we have to leave it in the on position at the lobby, okay, outside the doors, and take the key out. Then we have to turn it in the on position inside the car to keep full control of the two cars. And this little light is that indicator. Now, also, if that light flashes or is flashing uh, in, this, in these particular cars and in most of these cars, if that fire helmet or firefighter light is flashing, it's usually an indicator that there's smoke in the shaft, in the elevator shaft. And it's important to uh, follow your SOGs and guidelines on how you operate. Typically, you won't operate the elevator at all at that point uh, due to smoke being in the elevator shaft. But it's something to look at um, each elevator individually and find out how they operate. But that's typically what that means if that light's flashing. A long, steady light like we see in this particular picture just simply means that we have control of the cards in firefighter mode. Now, once we get it in firefighter mode, we can't just hit buttons and release them. So in this particular button, if we want the doors to open, we have to hold the button down until the doors are completely open. If we let off of that button while we're opening the doors, they're going to close again. Vice versa. If we want to close the doors, we have to continually press down that button and, and close those doors. So we have to make sure that the, the operation is complete and that we don't get in a hurry and we understand that if we just press the button and it doesn't work that it's not a malfunction we have to know how these elevators operate we have to completely depress them until the operation is completed the door open. Once the doors have closed you can hit the 18th button or the 14th or 9th or whatever button it is and it'll take you to that floor. Uh, whatever your high-rise guidelines are uh, operate within those this is just simply uh, we use this operation uh, for EMS calls uh, we get EMS calls, the truck will uh, control the elevator while the EMS crew is with the patient. That way, uh, if they need help, if we don't have to wait around for the elevator to come back up 18 floors to get the elevator, get the patient on, we, it's a more expedient process. 
finally, this shows the elevator in the on position. When we're done operating the car, we're going to take it back down to the first floor. We're going to uh, turn it in the off position, make sure that this light goes off. Uh, sometimes we'll have to turn it twice to get the light to deactivate to take it out of firefighter mode. And then you have to go back to the front panel uh, in the lobby and turn that key back to off as well. And it's back in normal operating mode. Um, so just important to know where your keys are located, how they work. Um, make sure that it's an elevator call key. Um, down here to the left is a service button, a service key, which does different things for the elevator, which you can use. You need to work with it, though. Sometimes they do different functions. It's just a lot easier if we get used to using the call button at all times. But they are two separate keys in most instances, and it's important to know the differences. So uh, that's how you operate most elevators. Make sure you look at your manufacturer's guidelines. They're not all the same. Some are going to operate differently. Uh, in our jurisdiction, all of our operations are pretty much identical to what I just showed you on here. So get out, know your buildings, know your guidelines. Uh, be safe. Keep training hard. See you next time. Bye.